Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial, guys, we are still going through the grade 12 mathematical literacy paper run that was written in September 2022 by the Gauteng Province learners, right? And in this video tutorial, guys, we are going to be going through question 2.2. Question 2.2 deals with exchange rates, okay? So before we get started with today's video tutorial, guys, please make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Please make sure that you've clicked on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time i upload a new video tutorial guys and also don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up because that really goes a long way in helping the channel grow and in helping the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics mouse so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial <music> Right, so in today's video tutorial, guys, we're going to be going through question 2.1 and question 2.2. I mean, two. And question 2.2, guys, deals with exchange rates because we're going to be actually using this table. So let's get started. Question 2.2, the value of a currency fluctuates. Okay, so if something fluctuates, it goes up and down. It's not fixed. It's not sturdy. It keeps going up and down on a daily basis based on supply and demand okay refer to the table below and answer the questions that follow let's just quickly analyze this um table right so for you to get one us dollar okay this is what it means one us dollar you need to basically have 13 rand and 82 cents for one Canadian dollar, you need 10 rand and 35 cents. For one British pound, you need 18 rand and 06 cents, right? For one euro, you need 15 rand and 73 cents. And for one Australian dollar, you need 9 rand and 82 cents, right? So that is basically what this table is telling us. Let's have a look at the questions. Question 2.2.1, which currency from the table above is the weakest, right? So looking at this table, right, you can already tell which currency is the weakest because the currency that is the weakest is the currency where you need less rands to get its, um, to get the currency, right? So in this case, we can see that the currency that is the weakest here, right, is the Australian dollar. Okay, because to for you to get one Australian dollar, you just need nine rand and eighty two cents, and that is actually the least amount that you need as compared to the other currencies. Okay, so in this case, the Australian dollar is the weakest. Right. Next question. Explain what this would mean to a South African traveling overseas. So what would it mean for an Australian traveling overseas? It basically means that if you had to basically choose um, which country you want to go to, do you want to go to America? Do you want to go to Canada? Do you want to go to Britain, Europe, Australia, right? It would be the cheapest to go to Australia, right? Than to go to the other countries, okay? So that's basically it. What would it mean? It would basically mean that it would be cheaper to travel to Australia than the other countries because you get more, you would actually get more dollars um, for your rents. Okay, so we're going to write that down. Right. So how would they, so it would be cheaper to travel to Australia than the other countries because you would get more dollars for your rent. Okay, so that would be the answer. You'd get two marks for that first answer, right? You would also get two marks for that second answer, right? Let's go on to the next question. Question 2.2.2. Mrs. Nkosi receives... 1,200 and 1,200 British pound, right, from my aunt in Britain. Okay, so we already know because it's Britain, we already know that we're dealing with the British pound. Okay, 
So she basically receives 1,200 British pounds from her aunt in Britain. We need to use the table above to calculate the rand value of um, 1,200 British pounds. Okay, so in this case, we want to convert this 1,200 British pounds into rands. Okay, guys, if you've been following with me in all my video tutorials, you know when you are doing your conversions, you multiply by what you want, you divide by what you have. That just always makes it easy for you to convert, okay? And you know, you just write your values in fraction form so that you see which units are cancelling, okay? And what units you are left with. If you basically can't do your conversions in that way, you will never, ever, ever make a mistake. You will never, ever get this question wrong okay so please follow with me right we already know in this case we want to convert the british pound or the brit sorry the british yeah the british pound right to rands okay and we already know this basically means that okay this basically means that one britain one british pound right so that's how you write it is equal to 18 rand and 06 cents okay okay that basically means this is question 2.2.2 one british pound is equal to 18 rand and 06 cents right what are we trying to convert we are trying to convert 1200 british pounds right okay so we can actually even just write that as British pound, right? It's denoted by that, okay? So we want to convert this 1,200 British pound into dollars, right? So this can also be written as just 1,200 divided by 1. You multiply by what you want. We want our units in rands. So we're going to multiply it by 18,006 cents. You divide it by what you have. We already have our units in British pounds, right? So here, what do we notice, right? The pounds and the pounds cancel. You see that? Okay. And you will basically be left in your units in rent. Okay. So guys, always remember, you multiply by what you want. You divide it by what you have. And you need to take into consideration the table that is given to you and how they basically tell you you're supposed to convert. If you follow this procedure, you will never ever go wrong, okay? So if you take that 1,200 British pounds multiplied by 18 rand and six cents, right? You will basically get that. It is actually 21,672 cents, right? So the question was basically asking, if Omis Tenkosi receives 1,200 from her aunt in Britain, right, that amount, that 1,200 in rand value is actually equal to 21,672 rand. Okay, so you'll just get one mark for multiplying by 18 rand and 6 cents, the final mark for your final answer. All right, let's go on to the next question. Question 2.2.3. After Mrs. Ngosi exchanged. Oh, it's actually Mrs. Ngosi, not Mr. Ngosi. After Mrs. Ngosi exchanged the money, she was charged 280 cents. Okay. And we're told that exchanging money in South Africa consists of, right? So if you basically exchange money, right? You will be charged an administration fee of 125 rand and you'll be charged a commission of 2.28% of the amount exchanged, right? So we need to verify showing all cal calculations whether she was charged the correct amount. So we basically want to verify whether this amount that she was charged of 280 cents right was correct okay so we basically need to basically calculate that how much did she exchange okay remember 
she exchanged that 1,200 British pounds into rands, okay? So in this case, we want to take that 20, um, 21,672 that we obtained, right? And we're going to multiply by 2.28% because we are basically told that, right? The commission that is charged is 2.28%. 8% of the amount exchanged, right? So in other words, right, the commission is equal to 2.28% of the amount exchanged, right? That's how we're going to get the commission, right? So we're going to start off by calculating the commission. Once we've basically calculated the, um, the commission that or Mrs. Ngosi had to basically pay. We're going to add that commission um, to the administration fee to calculate um, how much she was charged. Okay, right? Okay, so we're going to take that 2.28% off. We know when you see off, guys, you multiply by what was the amount that was exchanged. Remember, she exchanged 21,672 rand right so if you punch that into your calculator literally 2.28 percent multiplied by 21,672 right you'll get that the commission fee was actually equal to 494 rand point one two one six cents right so that's approximately 494 rand point one two cents that is his, um the commission that she was charged right but however we want the total amount um that she was charged right so for that amount we're going to still add the administration fee of right therefore the total amount charged right so the total amount that was charged we're going to take the admin fee and the admin fee was a hundred and 25 rand plus the commission fee. The commission fee was 494 rand and 1, 2 cents. If you punch that into your calculator, you'll find that the total amount that she was charged for obviously now exchanging um, from the British pound to the rand was actually equal to 600 and 19 rand point one two cents okay what is the question asking from us verify all calculations whether she was charged the correct amount remember in this case we are told that she was charged how much 280 cents right so from our calculations that we've just done right now right we can basically see that no she was not charged the correct amount Therefore, we can just say, no, she was not charged the correct amount. Okay. How would they mark this question? You'll get a mark for obviously multiplying the commission. I mean, the amount exchanged with that 2.28%. You'll get a mark for obviously taking the amount that you've obtained and adding it with the admin fee. Final mark for your final answer for the total amount charged, right? And for obviously saying no, she was not charged the correct amount. That is a total out of four. Okay, that is how they would basically mark that question. Last question. Question 2.2.4. Exchange rates fluctuate, right? So they go up and down all the time. List one list one reason why this happened why is it that the exchange rates are constantly fluctuating why is it that the exchange rates are constantly going up and down and up and down they're not fixed right why is that okay so if you're a person that watches the news there are numerous reasons that you can basically give in this um as your answer okay firstly guys we know that your exchange rates fluctuate because of the rising petrol prices okay that affects your exchange rate another thing that also affects your, your exchange rate is inflation okay 
that also affects your exchange rates, right? What else affects your exchange rates? Unstable conditions in a country's economy, right? So whichever one that you choose to use um, for your reason, um, from the ones that I've just mentioned here, they're absolutely correct. Okay. I'm just going to use this one and you'll just, you, you'll just literally get just two marks for whichever reason, um, you have provided. Okay. Question 2.2.4. Okay. I'm going to say inflation. Okay. Or you can say petrol prices, rising petrol prices. Okay. And so on and so forth, right? So for whichever reason that you basically used, you will just get two marks for that. All right. And that is basically it. I think this one was nice and easy. Um, I th I, at least now I can actually refer people to a video where I just deal with exchange rates because I think this one was nice and sweet. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope you guys followed with me in terms of how you were supposed to um, analyze this um, question, right? I think the key here is just realizing that this just basically means one US dollar is equal to 13 rand and 82 cents. One Canadian dollar is equal to 10 rand and 35 cents, right? For you to get one British pound, right? You need to have 18 rand and 06 cents. For you to get one euro, you need to get 15 rand and 73 cents. And for you to get one Australian dollar, you need to have 9 rand and 82 cents, right? So from there, if you basically got that, it's it will be very easy for you to basically convert to your rands, okay? So that is it for today's video tutorial. Please keep it locked for the next video tutorial, guys. We are going to be going through electricity tariffs using the sliding scale method, right? I've already done this in my channel. We've done, we've gone through the sliding scale. We've gone through just different ways in which you calculate tariffs. Um, and if you've been following with me, like from day one, this question was, this question is just going to be a breeze. Okay. So just please make sure that you take a picture or a screenshot of this question, right? And this page, actually, so this page and this page, try the question on your own. And I'll see you then tomorrow where I'm going to be dissecting this question and we're going to be answering it together. So, guys, I'll see you on my next video tutorial. That is it, guys. And I'll see you guys on my next upload, Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. Guys. Oh, 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 oh,